Okay, guys, this is going to be my review of Logan. Um, Logan's great. Logan was so just great. Um, the story's great. I think the emotion is dialed up to an 11. I just love seeing the Wolverine. You know what I mean? The, the brutal brutality. The, the, the fierceness. The animal that is the Wolverine. You know? We talk about... You know, all these, these comic book characters just being portrayed how they're meant to be. And this just feels like the Wolverine, the animal side of him. The, the you know, the brutal side of him, but still has that heart and emotion. I think the way he goes out is just so Wolverine-y. I, I don't have any other words because, like, how he sacrifices himself in many ways for what he loves, for what he cares about. And where he never he tells Laura that, um he cares about her but he shows that he cares about her because remember Logan at that final kind of battle that kind of when the, when the when um those the agents or whatever are chasing the the new mutants the young mutants Logan has a choice cuz they're cuz they're not after Logan they're after the the new mutants so Logan has a choice he could leave you know live his life you know go out go somewhere else, live his final years, or he can save the people that he cares about. Because let's be honest, remember, he sees, the, he looks at the binoculars, he sees the cars coming in the distance. He's standing on that perch. He has a choice. He can go, he can live his life, he can leave. He doesn't, he doesn't have to go into battle. He doesn't have to save them. That, that doesn't affect Logan, but it does. It affects him on a personal level. So that's a sacrifice. And I think that was such such an emotional moment because it's like you kind of grow as a character through all the films we see him because he is like the centerpiece of this kind of X Men universe and, and just to close in such a good way. And the Charles death was was also brilliant. I think this way of like his last kind of moments you see you see him just I guess just reconcile with with everything and just 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 putting a caption. On his life and it just like you see that kind of very um archaic um uh charles that very old charles that very charles that is at, genuinely at the end of his life at the end of his course end of his path and that was just great to see it's not where none of these characters are like we've previously met them these are unique characters these are our characters but in a world that is in distress. In these characters who have lived such a unique life. You know, Logan and them met technically in 1973. They've, you know, been friends for, at that point, let's see, 1973 to 20, 2029, whatever. They've been friends and known each other for what that would end up being. Um... 46 years, um, yeah, they'd be friends and know each other and their unique path to becoming friends is, and it's just, just such a grand, I feel like, just a grand, um, experience, and, and, um, I think that was just great, you know, this idea of, like, they've been in this, this distress world, and, and, and just seeing, like, the brutality and those, those violent, visceral, unique, action sequences on top of that heavy emotion you know like you you kind of almost get teary out when you see you know x um 23 uh x 24 actually stab charles because it's like you don't expect that you, you hear him talk and talk about how wonderful it's been just just because like yes we're in a sh they're in a shitty time they're in a you know a distressful time they're at the end they're both at their end of their lives and he's charles is just talking about how nice it's been. And and just that idea of how much Logan meant to Charles. And you see that. You know, Logan's genuinely taking care of him. And that does, you really do see how that's come a long way. From Charles taking care of him. But Logan paying it back. It, it's, it was great. And um, I think it was it was just a great send-off, I think. With, with this film and having, you know, X-23 lore in the mix. And like... That, those fights with um, Logan against X-24, the other Lo uh, Logan clone, whatever, was great. Because it's, you just see the Wolverine against uh, Wolverine. It's literally 
the Wolverine we love against a version of this Wolverine. And it's just great to see. I just think, like, I just think, like, the violence is, I guess, just, I think, really plussing this film in that, in that sense where you get the brutality of it. Because, like, in the other X-Men film, you didn't really see the blood. You didn't really see the violence. You didn't really see the gore. You just saw the, you know, the, the, the roaring and the, the, and the, the stunts of it. But you don't see the brutality of it like you do in this film. You know, you got hints of it in the Wolverine, but it's shown. And I think there's there's also a lot of shocking moments. And a lot of moments, because, like, when you watch the trailers, they don't give anything away, really. You know, I think, like, obviously, you know, you know, X-23 is in it. But everything else, you're like, wow, that's so unique. I did not know that's going to happen. And just the way he dies, it's not like he's, he doesn't have, like, a flashy death or anything. But he has a memorable death, an honorable death, that actually means something. The sense of his sacrifice gave, let, allowed these new mutants, the next generation of mutants. And while there's not a lot of them, but their kids, and their kids, and their kids will spawn a next generation of mutants. It just takes one mutant to survive that can you know, have a whole new generation of mutants, let alone these probably 10 of them, 20 of them. So I think that was so critical where Logan sacrificed himself and, and the idea of having the heart in his hands, gushing blood, because Laura was his um, figurative heart in the, the the core of his life because in the sense, Logan's never known much family. You know, through his 100 plus years of living, He's always had to move on. Gene, he had to move on. Um, uh, the, the, in X Men Origins, moved on for so many people. You know, had to move on with his friends, and you know, you know, the X Men all died. He had to move on from that. You know, had to, he he his the world's history. He doesn't even know from 1973 to 20. Like his history is totally different in that sense. So it it it, it it's all crazy to him where he's just. Because he's never, never can die. You see the other side of it. You see the when you see the other X Men films, you see how I guess awesome his powers are. To always heal, to to be, have claws and can bite, don't age, gets to heal real quick. But you see the other side of it, where suddenly he's in a time where he almost has nothing left where he's seen the world at its lowest and at its highest. Um, and I just think that this film is not on the highest scale, but it doesn't have to be. It's so such character base and, and where it's like, yes, it has a villain. Yes, it has that kind of story. But I think what all, only what really the villains do is just push the story in another direction to serve what the characters can do in these interactions and in these moments. And I love, you know, just, just the, the lessons they teach each other. Like, the, the, it's the trio of... Laura, Logan, and Charles, and it just acted brilliantly, and I just think, like, the, the, because you see, like, Charles with this, you know, uh, what's it called, uh, seizures, and you see his, you know, powers going out of control, you just see, the, you just see our heroes in a state we've never seen, you know, it's like, it's like finding, I'm trying to think of a good example, it's like finding, you know, it's, yeah, it's like, it's crazy, and it's like, it just feels so great just to see, and just to see the, I guess just the animal side of Wolverine, but yet the caring and emotional side of him. You see, every aspect about Wolverine is touched, and I think, like, every side of what makes a good film is in this film. Humor, story, great characters that you're invested in for, for 17 years at that point. So I think it was just a combination, and, it, and it's not about the build-up, because the, this film is so very much not interconnected with the other films, but it doesn't have to be. It's its own, it's its own Western story that's great and grand, and, and, and you just don't know what's going to happen. There's so many twists that you would have never predicted. That whole idea of X-23, of, of uh, that Logan, Logan clone X-24 was, was brilliant. And just the way Charles Charles went out, like like like, was was also magnificent because, like I said, I've already talked about it, but I was kind of talking about it and kind of 
looking back on his life and looking about how this kind of week that we kind of followed them on for during the journey that up to that point and and just you know being so appreciative of Logan and I love that idea of the way Charles went out he thought it was Logan so to so and I just love Logan's reaction of he just desperately not only he this whole film is just trying to protect Charles that relationship is so strong but you can see why it's so strong and it just you can tell just the act of that moment because like the emotional side it's brilliant because you can have the animal action bloody horror humor cursing logan old man logan but you can still have the emotional side of logan and i just think that's just great and that idea of like the anime named bullet and he wants to kill himself and just diving into the, what makes logan tick in this world and during this mission and where they go because of just logan's motivation and how he goes a complete you know 180 to to laura and i think it's 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 even a stretch to call this a comic book film it's 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 a just a great film um, that takes you in directions that pack everything you want. And it's not like I cried, but like, go, I, seeing Logan at his lowest low, and, and on that log, and just being stabbed, and, and I love his line of saying, so this is what it feels like. Because he, he's just, that's just a huge question mark. Because he's seen so many people he care about die. So many people he saw, again, die and leave. And, and he had to move on. And that struggle. But yet he never knew what it feels like. He knows, he understands, he can, he, he, he can barely sympathize. Because he can only imagine what it, looks, what it is to get stabbed and be killed. Or be shot at and be killed. And so that line of this is what it feels like. Seeing Laura. And, and that... Laura putting changing the cross to an X was just it's just those little subtle touches as a huge X-Men fan as I am and huge film fan as I am you really get the most of best best of both worlds you get just a great film but just a great X-Men Wolverine film and I think that was what really made it pop for me where I think like the best films on a genre can say oh it's one of the best like sci-fi films, it's like you could say Aliens or Alien or whatever. Best sci, one of the best sci-fi films, but you could also call uh, best F, best films or or Terminator, one of the greatest sci-fi action films of all time, but also just one of the great films of all time. This is in that category. One of the greatest comic book films of all time, but just one of the greatest films of all time. You know you've made it as the best of the best when someone could put you the best of your genre, but just the best of any film and that that was what it felt like because as a comic book film it doesn't feel like that but that's why you can't really i can't say it's the best of com- the best comic book film because it's so different and so unique where it's like technically yes it's a comic book film and technically it's one of the best if not you know one of the yeah definitely one of the best but just as a film just great and and, and how you can have not the an, a, a big ending of this chapter and in my opinion this should have been like the last traditional x-men film dark phoenix who gives who gives a crap deadpool 2 you, you can keep that and i really love deadpool 2 but yeah, you don't have to change that that that's on its own but this just felt like the exclamation mark because like these two characters charles and logan particularly logan but charles has been the center point for those newer class x-men films and yes still a kind of guiding post for the original x-men films these two characters have been have done it all really um saved the future or at least part of the future you know obviously it turns out crap anyways but that doesn't matter i don't care i don't care it doesn't matter but 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 it's just i just think the detail to to this i I could talk about this film all day about how much i love my favorite scene and i caliban was great like he like the like there's humor it's still humor where it's like you can have humor, emotion, heart, action, 
comedy, whatever. You can have it all. You can have it all. This film has it all. Great characters, great story. The villains, while not being the most depth villain, I, I think the villains don't need to be there, but they are there because it, it moves the story forward. I think the, the villains are very not there. There's really, for the majority of the film, there's no villains, but they don't really need villains. I think, like, this idea of, like, this kind of adventure chase um, with, with, you know, so many memorable moments. I think um, Charles's seizures do- were actually shown in just a great, great man that I really love and appreciate. So I appreciate this whole film. It's it's honestly almost like a ten out of ten film. I think um, the new the the young mutants are, you know, I think this idea of like n- new mutants being tested on and and Logan, you know, dying and, and just saying this, and then and then Laura saying daddy, like like they have a great relationship and and X and X twenty three is Laura, whatever, whatever you want to call it, is the closest thing Logan has to genuine family. Because it's Charles is somewhat his, you know, kind of family, father figure, and just the emotion of, of him just, I mean, I'm going back and forth throughout this film, but just Logan continuing to remind Charles, it's not me. As Charles in the in the trunk with the stab, with the stab it's not me, it's not me. And it's like, and, it, and no, nothing like felt forced to be rated R. The action is great to be rated R. Like the violence and brutality, brutality, especially in the opening scene, just caps, caps, um, um, capsule, whatever the word is, capital capitalizes Logan State. We're, and not really. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, I mean, it just, just, it captures the the way that Logan goes into battle. Not just battle, but just has to live his life. Where do you know? Do you know how many people he's killed? Probably thousands. Probably hundreds. Do you know how many wars he's been in? You know, a bunch. You know, you since he was since the, the Civil War, every war he's been in is just. It's just, just in many ways, just continuing to be just like one ongoing development is in his life to another, and um, yeah, and it was great, and it was like the set pieces are great, and I was shocked when um, X twenty four or X twenty three, I can't get the Lo- the Logan clone killed that whole family. I saw it coming because like they invited the family, and I think like some of these characters were selfish, but it, it was meant to be that way, and I think like. Charles was very unique where he was like, you could tell he's dying. You could tell that it was only days when he was dead. And, and it was just capsulizing, I guess, realistic people, realistic elders who have seizures, who have these multiple brain diseases, who can't remember things. And just Logan not being able to see. And like, they constantly go back to Logan's body after like a fight and just showing the scars, not healing. And like, while, and just you could feel the pain because it's like, in this film, I've always imagined every time he got shot at, every time he got stabbed, as the feeling of you're dying, but you don't die. So it's like you have that feeling of complete and utter pain, but yet you survive, but the pain never goes away. And so you can only feel for him. And so when he actually dies, he has that emotion of, I feel like in some ways, satisfaction. In some ways, where he he's lost so much, but He's gained so much at the same time, where he ends up, you know, watching his his you know daughter leave into the sunset, and and while he doesn't get the the riding into the sunset scene, he doesn't get to you know retire and live his life in happiness. That goes to the next generation, but that's what Logan wanted in in many ways. He he cares, and I think you see a caring Logan. But the same to me, you always did. And I think, like, that's what I love about Logan and Wolverine as a character. Of he's such, like, a guy who... And I make the comparison to Han Solo. And I would, lo- I would love to see an old man Han Solo, like, with him and Chewie. I mean, I will never get that. But where I think... Why I make the comparison is they're both people... We're kind of like ragtag, you know, can kill people who, you know, are not always, who, who are, you know, Han's a smuggler, 
Logan's almost like an animal type guy. He, he has, you know, he can he goes into war and has some. He's brutal when he fights people. Han does kills people in style. Yes, Han shot first. Whatever, I don't care. Um, they both steal things. They both are not always the nicest. They're not always the. They don't always care the most about everybody. They they'll go in. and Han's my favorite Star Wars character. And I love Logan, but my point is that they're both characters who can be brutal. Who can be honest in a not so nice way cannot always be nice uh, always just can be selfish at times but at the same time they care, the people they care about they go great depth get depth for and I think both their sacrifices in some ways save the next generation and so I make that comparison because they're both characters that like again like I said can be brutal can be mean but at the same time can be sympathetic and do go to great lengths to save the people they care about, to help the world where they have not necessarily mixed personalities, but have two very different sides of them that make them who they are and make them unique. Logan, you see in the opening sequence, him pounding and punching and cursing, and I love the touch of him being a limo driver anyways, but at the same time, you see him care for Charles, give him the pills, force up the medicine. You know, care for uh, Laura. Get the next generation of mutants out of there at all costs, even if it costs his life. Uh, just, you know, I'm sobbing almost when Charles is dead. Going to, but yeah, at the same time, right after Charles dies, go pounding, pounding at, at uh, the, the Logan clone. So at the same time, it's like, what makes the character unique is it's not your typical hero. And same thing with Han. It's not your typical hero. He's not about to be sympathetic. He's not about to to say oh oh poor 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 cowboy or whatever poor poor girl poor this poor that whatever whatever he's not about to be the guy who's oh you're just following orders kill 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 but at the same time Charles in danger he's gonna jump up in front of that bullet if someone's about to shoot him and I just think that detail of the character and that character study, they, you know, it's almost like a character study of Charles and and Logan and and Laura at this place in time because of the context of the story. And like, the cursing works because of the scenarios. You just see that poor farmer get killed. Are you about to say, "Oh crap"? No, you're gonna say, "Oh, you know, f word." You know, are you when you get sh when you get shot when Logan gets shot out? And like I said, I've already discussed this, but feels the pain as if he was going to die in the pain of actually dying, but not dying. When you feel like you're dying with a gunshot, but you know you're not going to die or anything, or just, just getting shot or stabbed at, period. Are you about to say nothing? Or just, are you about to say ow? This is not who Logan is. He's going to curse. He's going to go at it. You know, when he's, when he's in the middle of nowhere within this, you know, act, and Laura's bothering him. Uh, the state of mind that Logan's at, you know, suicidal, whatever. He's gonna curse. It's just who he is. And I think, like, it doesn't feel forced, where it's like, it's not just throwing F-words for the, It's not like he's about to, you know, shoot a guy and say, oh, F-word. No, if he gets stabbed, he's gonna say the F-word. If he gets annoyed or bugged and he's in a bad stick bad situation he's gonna curse he's gonna say bad stuff and 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 even charles does because charles has nothing to lose i think you see a very nothing to lose charles but also you know a charles who's losing his mind who doesn't know everything because it's a different charles because it's not the charles who has all the answers it's not the charles who can use his powers and feel no pain this is the charles who struggles to even get up or obviously he can't get up but struggles to even use his mind and when he does use his powers, it's all out of control. And you just see a very different... Where you see the same characters you've loved from the other films, but the characters, not only just more true to the comics, but just more true to the time period and more realistic to the, more realistic to what this character would go through in this place and time. So I love this film. This film is absolutely freaking fantastic. Love this film, love this film, love this film. Couldn't say that enough. Stay tuned for our videos. Come right at you.